Yo, what is going on guys? Gary Rexon here, bringing you a, another VOD review. So, from my last video, I just want to say to everyone, thank you for all the support. I also want to say thank you to all the people that have acknowledged me on hitting Masters. Today I played some more games, we're at 56 LP, so... We're kind of the smell finger at the moment, and I have a lot of games to review. Some good games, some very bad games, and... One of the criticisms I had in my last video was, well, not so much a criticism, but more so an idea. And that idea was more so to, like, try and review more games that aren't stomps. And I will do my best for that, but a problem I have with the games where I do win and I don't have such a good score, it's almost like I'm being carried and I don't know if it's, like, a stomp game where, like, I made mistakes, but my team auto win, win like, won the game, I mean, and... I think those type of games are pretty difficult to review, in my opinion. Because, like, I can go over my mistakes, but the matter of fact is I'm not really being challenged to win the game because my team's winning automatically, so... I'm going to be very careful on the games that I... Like, that I pick. This game, for instance, I play very well. I carry really hard playing Bruiser and Ecton, and I thought it was a pretty good game to review because... Some people struggle with the Lee Sin lane and say that he's OP, but I think Lee Sin is very simple to play against. And a lot of people don't see me play Conqueror on Ecton, and I thought this game would be a very good representation to show me playing it. I don't play it too often. I'm, not, I'm usually playing it when I'm not really feeling myself playing Prowl's Claw. Because full AD and Prowl's Claw is very mindset based, and if you're not in the mindset to play it, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities to capitalize on players and being able to snowball your lead. So Gold Drink is more so playing for your team and frontlining. And this game was pretty much perfect for it. So let's get into the review itself. So Lee Sin is pretty beatable in all playstyles. Conqueror, Gold Drinker, like he can't really do anything. As we're about to find out. But anyways, level 1, I stay in this bush, try and get some information. I should do this before I actually commentate. So I stand in this bush knowing that maybe Kindred comes to ward or perhaps Morgana tries to invade of a team. Usually it will be up here over this spot or it will be like from this way. Like it just depends on the path they're taking. It could be like through mid lane. They, they walk through here. Like if I go like this, they walk through here. Like we're kind of blindsided, like we don't really see them. We see them now because obviously Syndra's mid, but before like we won't get to see them. So they walk this way, this way, sometimes through here, there. Like it's just knowing the paths and like how your level one is. Like are they going to invade? Are they going to just get vision? It's these things you need to think about, but in this situation with my jungler being here and Jenner in base, I'm just waiting in this bush because I get two sources of, sources of information with this path and this path. So it's really safe to stand here if you can't watch the tri bush and nobody's covering this part of the map. Level one. So we're weighing a little bit. I see that Kindred's there. I'm now moving out. I place a ward. This is just safe to do because if I don't ward this, then it's very likely that she goes to invade or even starts my red buff. Syndra could ward too, but not everybody does it, and for the moment, I just thought, okay, I'll drop a ward down and I'll go play safe in lane. I'll play very slow. So that was pretty much my game plan early. And one moment, let me turn my mic settings down because I can notice that I'm hitting the red bar a lot as I'm talking. And I do want to improve on my quality in my videos. And I don't want things to be like constantly like... Being bad, so yeah. Let me know how all the audio sounds and how I sound through the video. I'm very rusty when it comes to commentary and I know somebody said to like have a script. The only problem with a script is that it's very unnatural and it's like in the moment there's like a lot of things I could talk over about and I don't know, I just kind of go with the flow with the game and then explain what I'm thinking. Before um, like like watching this review though, I did watch it through... um. Let me say that again. I um, I watched through the game again to see what happened because I did play this game like two days ago. And before it went to waste this review, like replay, I thought I'd just review over it because I do want to try and get as many unique matchups as possible. And this is like one of them that I ended up finding. But yeah, 
So level one, I know that Kindred could be top. So I have to be very careful. Now, most Kindred players do actually start red, then like path towards like red, blue, then gank, or like red gank. It kind of depends. In this game, uh, she actually started red though, but I wasn't too sure. My jungle tracking is pretty bad at the moment as a player, so I do need to kind of get the hang of understanding where junglers are going to start. And for you guys yourself, you should definitely try to uh, think where's the jungler going to start. Junglers getting that double leash, like uh, the start of the game is so huge. Like That's why we see Carthus start blue. We're seeing Kindred start red. It's just super OP to get that double leash early. So then they can just like do a full clear by being very healthy and... It's, it's really um, a lot faster too, so... For this game, I should actually expect Kindred to come top, like, two, at two minutes. So, at the moment, I'm just waiting. I'm just seeing where Lee Sin is. I see that he, he shows up. He didn't leash the Kindred. So, I, have a, I now understand that Kindred's at red. So, all I want to do is try to mitigate damage. Like, I don't want to take too much damage from Lee. His E start is actually <coughs> very strong. Lee will E and then he can walk up auto attack you twice and look for a cheesy trade. So you kind of want to play on the edges here. You know, try and farm with Q. But try and get level 2 before him as well. It's pretty, like, essential. It's a bit hard, but it doesn't matter too much. And either way, this is kind of fine, the lane state. If it's pushed up towards me because... Kindred can't gank me, and Lee Sin can't really get anything on me either. Did we get level 2 before him now? Do that trade, very nice. With Conqueror too, my trades are going to be even more dangerous against Squishies. So, taking Conqueror, I think it's good into fighter lanes. Um, but there's some matchups like Set, Garen, or like... Darius, where longer trades are actually less beneficial for you. And that's where press the attack is a lot more um, at an advantage because you want to do quick trades to go in and out. Conqueror is more staying in the fight, and against the Lee Sin, you're going to be utilizing Conqueror a lot more because you don't really threat him. He's also like an AD caster. He's often waiting for his Q and E, which are pretty, pretty high cooldowns early. So we can actually greed on our trades a lot more and not have to worry about the Lee Sin. Um, like killing us or anything like that. So I'll see Kindred's mid lane. I'm kind of free to be a little bit more aggressive and slow push the lane. Build that wave in. And now I'm posturing aggressively. Do a Q cancel trade, EQ auto attack, and now Lee Sin has no health at all. And the wave is pushing into him, which can set up a dive in future games. If my jungler started a different route, perhaps he could start like... I mean, he would do red and then he would like come towards top and Lee Sin would be killable if he stays. Lee Sin is also killable right now if I get my W. But as we're about to see shortly, I'm not able to get this off because I see the Kindred walk towards our Carthus. In higher elo, it is very essential to help your jungler out. If you're not able to help your jungler out, you're going to be at a lower... Um, you're going to be a disadvantage, especially with a Carthus, like a jungler that wants to scale. So we don't really have any other options here to like do anything. Like we have to help the Carthus out. And if we're not helping him out, he's he's mostly going to die. Then Kindred gets a lead. Kindred snowballs out of control. And then it becomes impossible for me to do anything. Like Kindred is a hard counter on Ecton. So we want to really just like lower the chances of her being strong. So in this situation... I have to roam straight away. I do try and shove the wave out, but I can't do it fast enough, so I'm running to Karthus straight away. Now, to my surprise, Karthus actually killed Kindred here while being a level down. I was actually very surprised at this. But yeah, we don't really miss out too much. We do miss a cannon creep, though, unfortunately. So I'm just slow pushing. I'm waiting for my E to come back up. Trying to play my range too. Like I'm walking in and out. If he walks up I can E, empower W, auto Q, then like E out maybe. The thing with Conqueror too is that you like have to trade a lot differently. Like fast combos aren't exactly the best thing to do. 
you kind of just want to like combo like a bit differently so you don't waste all your damage at once like you want to spread your auto attacks more i think here i should have pinged my jungle and succumb i think i'll do it maybe do i do it I actually don't but that's a bad habit of mine that i've talked about a lot recently is that i don't tell my junglers to help me enough like if i do this more i'm able to get more leads top lane and snowball my lead a lot faster too so for myself it is very important for me to utilize this but in this type of game it was often just like playing against the kindred like we had to react and do things so again i don't have time to push the wave out i have to attend to my team who is currently being invaded by the kindred once again and the morgana Syndra has no mana, and I have to be there before Lee Sin. I have nearly 100 Fury. Lee Sin's like half health-ish. So we are at an advantage, you could say. Yeah, I kill. we killed the Lee here. Syndra unfortunately dies. I'm now kind of trapped here, but I see the Janna coming. So in this situation, I just want to stall it out. I want to walk towards the minions, because if I'm in the minion wave... I can build fury, I can maybe get some XP, I can get more health from my Q, like I'm at a safer position being here while waiting for my Janna to walk through. So yeah, now I'm coming through this way. I E over the wall thinking I can get my second dash, like E here, then E onto Morgana. But sadly enough, I don't get my dash, I'm then binded. Like I could have, I could have E'd here too if I had my second dash, but at a blow flash unfortunately. Meaning I can't go aggro for the Kindred, but either way, the Leeson was teleporting, which is bugged once again this patch. And now I kind of have to make an exit <clears throat> before I die and give up my gold. So a little bit unfortunate. Let me turn the game sound up a little bit. The great thing about the slow is that I did get a kill, I did get an assist, and now I'm able to TP back to the lane and create a freeze for myself. The way being built like this means Lee Sin lost a lot more than I did. So I TP back, I get the minions that um, were building up in the wave, I can then force a freeze, and Lee Sin can't really do anything against it. I'm not sure if that was my intention this game, I can't really remember if I tried to freeze. I don't think I could, actually I do try I believe. Actually, no, I don't. I'll just push it out like a monkey. It's not really beneficial to do what I did there, but if I tanked it any longer, I'd probably lose a lot of health, and I don't really want to do that, despite the advantage I built up for myself. So at the moment, I'm watching our lanes while I'm slow pushing. In these moments where you're slow pushing a lane, you want to use this time to just look at your teammates. Like, like what are they doing? Like, what information are you getting? The more information you can provide yourself, the more, um, I mean, you know, knowledge you'll have over the game. And you'll know if people are using summoners, you'll know if, like, things are happening, like junglers are ganking or mid laners are roaming. Like, not everybody tracks it, believe it or not, even in Master's ELO that I've learned recently. So, it's always good to just, like, do a little bit more for yourself and your team. Like, those pings go a long way for your team if you're pinging stuff. Because, again, not everybody, do like, does it. A lot of people are lazy and it's only going to be a lot better for you for um, like to just have this information yourself and the team. Another reason why I'm slow pushing is because I don't know where Kindred is. Like Kindred has to gank a lane and I'm just kind of looking out on the map like where she could be. So in these moments where I'm slow pushing, Lee Sin can't really do anything and Kindred can't really gank me either because I have control over the lane and I'm not shoving in. So I'm kind of playing at my tempo here. So yeah, with a slow pushing. I have Iron Spike Whip too in items. I'm going Gore Drinker because my whole job here is to be a frontline for my team. Had I been to Prowler's Claw, I don't think I'd do that much. Like, I could one-shot the Lee and stuff, but because I don't have tankiness, Kindred will end up surviving fights with her ultimate. Twitch will like pop off on me with ult. Morgana is like prevalent to stopping me too. Like there's just too many factors here for me not to go Prowl's Claw. So I found that it was very smart just to go the Gore Drinker. So I went on Spike Whip for the damage and the active. And I have like a big power spike of it. So in this moment you might have noticed that Lee's gone. I do ping 
for my team, as you see. Throwing two pings down. I always do this too. Like, I throw two pings down, then I put, like, a exclamation mark ping near my laner. Because if they're, like, tunneled in, they'll see a ping over their head, meaning that someone's roaming down. Some people complain, saying, oh, my laners don't see this, even though I pinged. It's not about, like, the quantity of pings, necessarily, but it's more about the quality. If you can ping for your lane, then ping on top of them. It's sending that message a lot quicker than just spam ping in top lane, because not everybody's going to see it. Like, they're going to see it if you ping on top of them, because you see the, the animation. You know? So, it's just some things you need to think about with this, and it'll stop your team dying a lot more. And I think because Kindra, I mean, Syndra saw the pings as well, she... She was able to position in a lot better spot because of it, instead of going aggro. Yeah, Lee doesn't do anything out of it. I hard shove the wave, and Lee Sin is missing minions and XP. Not too much though, unfortunately, because of the cannon with our position, but either way, we do what we can there. So right now, I back for a longsword and boots. I build the boots here because I do want to like compete with Lee Sin. Like if I'm not building boots, I'm just gonna get capitalized on. And a lot of that team already has like boots um, as well. So if I'm not building it, like I'm kind of gonna get, I'm gonna get kited. I'm gonna get picked off. There's a lot of negatives not having boots in my opinion. And there are some people that don't like building them straight away. But for me personally, the quicker I get moon speed, the better. That's how I see it. Yeah, because uh, we get boots too, we run to lane pretty quickly. We catch all the minions. Drop a control ward down in Tribush. Very important to have that vision control. And now, again, I just got last hitting. My team's fighting bot side the map right now. I think I was, I think I was looking while I was like wanting to lane. My E was bad here. I should have E'd in front, but the only thing I thought about here was that what if he kicks me into tower? But even if he did, I'm not in range for um, like tower hits, and I'm not going to be in lethal range either. So it wouldn't really matter for me to like for that to happen. I cut off Lee from being able to move this side, and because he has no flash, I can potentially kill him too. So it's just one of the things that I probably should think about. So in these moments, I want to build Fury and look for an Empowered W, but I don't think I'd do it here, even though it was free. I don't know why I was playing so scared. I think it was the fact that he has instant wave clear with his E, and I can't really just get the dive off. Like, I need more Fury, and I need him to be lower health. Yeah, right now, I push in. I see the, the, the marks on Kindred's... I mean, I see that the Kindred mark is on Scuttlecrab. I'm now moving in to get information because i was here i knew that she was fighting i look here just seeing what camps were taken i now understand that the the crab was taken i ward to provide vision for my team at the same time kindred is ganking mid and i don't know what else happens here Do a pretty okay trade on the Lee Sin. This lane's very slow and boring, honestly. Like, there's not... A lot of things didn't really happen in this lane. It was more so the macro play and the way I played team fights that was probably the highlight in this game. I mean, my CS was good. My roam times are good. Like, I mean, honestly, I am playing lane really well here. And I'm out, like, laning Lee Sin, but... I don't really get a lead by killing in this game. It's it's more of getting the lead from the CS and the way I'm positioning and like moving. Because Lee Sin's always under pressure and has to follow. And if he's not following, like he can't really like protect his team or maybe make me shy away from fights. Lee recalls, I take two tower playings. Again, because I'm doing these like aggressive trades as well, like he has to just like dis like back. If he doesn't back, I kill him. My jungle can potentially come topside and dive. Didn't happen this game, but you know it's just food for four in future games, which is what I find more important. I 
the moment, it does look like a pretty doomed game. Like, had I been in a a more negative mindset, which has been common in like the last few months when I've been playing ranked, I probably would have gave up. Honestly, I probably would have said, "Okay, you know, team gap. What am I gonna do? I think I'll just surrender and then maybe hope next game things get better." But then I'll be thinking about it. I'll be angry. I queue up and play bad. So my recent mindset is more of like just playing to be consistent. I'm doing what I can to better myself. I'm not always going to play good, but what I am learning through my climb at the moment is that, you know, I have to just learn. I'm going to the reviews more. I'm watching like the mistakes I'm doing. I'm looking at the things I'm doing well. And it's just building my, my strength points as a player. Like think of it like this way. You're like adding more experience, understanding how you lost and how you can like do things differently to get better. And you know, with that and like the more you do it, the more you get better as a player and the more your mindset is lesser like affected from the negativity in league games of people flaming each other, your team's like dying. Like it's, it's just really positive to, to have this mindset I have at the moment. But anyways, like I digress. So... Yeah, we're walking into lane. Obviously, I understand that my team is kind of behind at the moment, but I do have a lot of power over my laner, and I can turn the game around if I execute things properly. So again, I am just last hitting here, trying to do the slow push. I'm doing this so I can like get more minions, because the faster I push it out, the more my lanes is going to be in a very unfavorable position. And because we did see the Kindred doing Herald, like, I want to buy as much time as I can to farm this wave and not miss gold. Lee Sin can also not farm if I do this. So, Janna comes top lane now. I can set up a fight on him. I'm just building the wave, though. Nothing was really happening at the moment because I didn't know where Kindred was. It was very possible to understand that Kindred could be top lane still. So, I had this in my mind because if I did just run up and try and force something... Maybe Kindred comes out the bush. And as we see, my hypothesis here was pretty right, like, on how I viewed the situation. Lee now waste kick because I keep the slow push. Like, again, imagine I just shoved out here. I could have died. I could have, like... Blown my gold lead away, but because I played it slow and calculated, I managed to outplay this potential threat of losing summoners or my ult. Uh, my my gold I, I could have got from minions, like... A lot, a lot uh, of things went well pretty... So let me rephrase that. A lot of things have went well this game. Sorry for my bad commentary. So right now, I'm pushing. Like, they're pretty low. I don't have to worry so much. Like, Kindred's pretty squishy compared to me. And I have all my stuff up still. So, I'm not really scared. We push the lane in. And we could look for a dive here. Lee has no ult. Janna's by my side. All I need to do is get the W. And I R. Tama or Spike Whip. EQ. And then, like, I get out. So it was really well played, the way I built the minion wave up, the way I played it slow, like it was pretty smart by me. So in these situations where they take Herald, just think that they could be top lane. So you want to play it as slow as possible here. So now I'm here just taking the platings. Pretty fed off them. I'm backing. I have 160 S 11 minutes. Like, this is perfect farming right here. This is really perfect. On the flip side to this, though, my my Lucian dies. Kindred runs bot lane. And now I'm forced to TP. Another benefit of having TP for this game was that I'm able to defend this tower now. Just being here. Kill the Herald. And we keep our bot tower up, so that means the enemy stalled in the laning phase still. And I'm getting more gold for myself too by taking these minion waves. And I managed to get my gore drinker too. So I'm pretty huge. I bought more, I bought, bought Merc Treads for the Morgana this game. 
Because I, di I didn't take tenacity in runes, and not taking tenacity is a pretty big issue. If Oh, no, I did. Okay. I think either way, it was still okay. Maybe Tabby's was better? Mm. I think Tabby's would have been better, actually, now that I think about it. I'm not sure why I even went Merc Treads, then, if I had tenacity. So we've had the landers right now. Least, um, Lucian goes top lane to get the minions in the tower. I stay bot because I just got a reset and I'm like on the map. Had my gold spent for Gore Drinker. So I could just stay bot lane and apply pressure. I keep Twitch here. He has no mana. And we could just like. We can just force this here. We can even like maybe force a dive with Carp Assault. So I'm walking here. Do the one shot combo on her. And we get more playing for ourselves. Twitch back to this time and Janna started leaving. So I'm not scared of Twitch. I am three levels ahead. I have all this fury that I end up spending like a more. But I think I just did it because I wanted to um, just shove the wave in. Twitch is pretty diveable here. I should have autoed first. I think auto would have been a lot better. And I was kind of saved by the fact that Soraka didn't ult there. Because I probably could have died. It's a pretty slow combo. So we take tower here now, my team's fighting mid. It looks like a winning fight, I don't know if it is. Turns out it wasn't. Oh yeah, Kindred had triple kills here, so right now she's 9 and 2. This is dangerous as hell. Like, it's so good I'm going frontline because I can tank her stuff and everybody else. Yeah, Kindred's a threat right now, and we need to, like, stop making misplays as a team. But yeah, I get the reset. I'm now building Sterix Gage. Sterix allows me to tank a lot more for my team, as I've been, like, preaching about this whole game. Sterix also works super well with Guardian's Angel and Gar um, Gargoyle. Having both of those is pretty essential in this game. Lee kicks me to the face. It did hurt, by the way, just so you guys know. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Not much else going on right now. My plan is just to take the side towers, and we got dragon spawning soon. I don't know how soon. So it's 40 seconds, so in that time, I want to push the lane in, get that reset, and then look for Dragon. Now we've... We're flanking on the side because we see them walking into our jungle. This is like a prime time, like, chance to fight here while I have my ult, and they're like, in an awkward position. Get the shit down on Kindred. Twitch just got a kill though, and there's not much else to really salvage here because the whole team died. And Janna just kind of went full. <laughs> like aggro though. I mean, I respect the Janna player. They, they, were played, they played pretty good, honestly, the Janna. I think. Or well, at least, like, at times, like, she's around me. Yeah, right now, they're probably on Dragon, so we want to, like, just be there. Like, there's a lot of people that are low and have used their resources. Wait, no, they're not on Dragons. We kill Kindred. What I mean is, like, we want to just get to the Dragon while they all have to reset. So, Twitch is low. Soroka, like, has no one to be around. 
Kindred's dead, and now we just want to like force the dragon before it's too late. So we're just gonna do this real quick. Just gonna fast forward it because nothing really happens. But yeah, we're in a really good spot here. And like I talked about the last time I did a review, it was that um, the more dragons you have, the more you can just kind of relax. So while my team is behind and I'm ahead. Like, we're kind of relaxed by the fact that we have two dragons and the enemy team's more under pressure for making plays. And because they're under pressure, they're not going to think, think of things calculated enough like we're doing at the moment. So yeah, it's kind of on them to play the fights perfect. Like, we don't really need to play it as perfect. And Kindred has all the kills too. Like, Lee Sin is irrelevant. Twitch is, like, he's scaling, so he's going to take a while. So we're in a super good spot here as long as the team fight with me. Syndra dies once again. He's a little bit infuriating at the time. I'm like, ah, oh, come on, guys. Stop inting. Let me carry you guys. Stop. <laughs> yeah, we buy our Sterox. We get Stopwatch. Stopwatch is really good here. Twitch decides to heal. Yeah, the Stopwatch just helps me, like, frontline more. And I can, like, take in more damage. Try and cheese me here. Doesn't really do anything. Like, let, let me tell you, Masters players cheese so much. Like, these players are disgusting. Like, I thought I cheesed with Ignite when I was, like, climbing. But, hell, like, these guys are just always doing this type of stuff. Every game. I mean, you gotta do what you can to get an advantage. And that's why the games are like very coin flip. A lot of them. Because sometimes things work and sometimes things don't work. Right now I'm just kind of investigating the area. Trying to see what's going on. If there's any like vision around. And I'll push bot lane. I look mid lane and there's a fight going on. I'm starting to walk up and... With the way they're positioned, this is like a prime like time like TP. So I'm TPing here to cut them off. They have nowhere to run. So getting a TP off like this was huge. Because now I come in. They're trapped. I focus the Soraka here. Because she can heal their team. So living in that Soraka just means that. You know. They have no sustain now. And I can tank a lot for my team. And everybody's pretty like much healthy. I have two people focusing me at the moment. Get Sterix proc'd. I stopwatch. My team now kills Kindred. We now kill the Morgana. And just because I went this play style, I'm able to do so much for my team. Because we needed that front lane. And it, it really is carrying me, the, carrying me the game here. And another, another thing was that... It's a very eye-opening experience because I never played Gore Drinker. I've only been playing it recently because I haven't really been confident in my ability and playing Gore Drinker just means I can like work on my team fighting. I can work on my like limit testing with it. Like there's a lot of things I can work on that's like very beneficial for my team and for me as a player to learn from because I'm in a new elo now and I have to learn on the spot. So yeah, it's been a very eye-opening experience. That's for sure. My team gets Herald, I take bot tower, so I take one more wave, I believe, and we look for the reset. I'm just backing over here, I think, because I didn't want anyone stopping my people. Or actually, do I go mid? Guess I do. Just taking a break to sip on my water. <laughs> Why is it like no animations? The skin, so weird. Yeah, I think I just went mid though to get the BF sword, right? Actually, I didn't even need the way of mid. I could have, I could have actually just recalled here, been on the map, so we're like ready for Baron. But I kind of stalled it instead. But I don't think it really hurts us too much because I think we start the Baron like soon, maybe. 
Well, not actually. Defend the mid wave. I mean, it was very convenient just backing and then getting to the tower in time. So it actually wasn't like a bad play. It was pretty good. So what's next in these type of games? And why is... Why is the eject... Oh, there. Okay, I'm blind. I, I never use this, so... I don't really notice the ejective times. So, what is next? We have two dragons, and we have the next dragon coming in 50 seconds. What do I want to do as a top laner? I kind of just want to be ready. Like, I want to drop a ward down, like, here in these paths, so we can understand where the enemy is. Because, again, vision is key. Vision provides everything. It is our eyes. It is our decision-making. Like, it... It kind of just gives us foresight into things and having that knowledge over people just gives you that inherent advantage to make plays and to think situations through. So right now I look to drop a ward somewhere. I place one there to see if anyone's coming through the bush. We see Soraka's like trying to de ward. I'm now in position to like kind of flank if they're walking from this angle, trying to get the dragon first. My team's also locked in mid, so that their team actually has an advantage just to walk down to dragon. Or like try and catch a Syndra. So me being here is pretty good I would say. Because I can come out. Force a fight. My team goes in with battle song. And we're in a pretty good spot. I can even flank these like corridors too. Yeah, I end up walking this way. Twitch ends up dying. Didn't really do anything now. I'm just there to like bodyguard. Like nobody's trying to jump on my team if I'm there. The mom just tanking things. Pretty uh boring experience. <laughs> but again, this is the great thing about playing Bruiser Renekton in these games. Like I can tank everything for my team. And I don't need to worry about them like dying as long as i'm playing it well like this is like a solid bruiser game for me like i've probably like one of my best games in a while right now i'm trying to ping the baron like we have kindred dead we have twitch dead or like respawning we have soraka dead they can't stop us and we have herald mid lane so it only means like to go baron like it is a perfect opportunity yeah i'm trying to ping it but my team's not really responding right now until they do it here Yeah, because we took so long, like, we end up, like, having this crazy fight for some reason. And we're not being first to the Baron. And we're giving them giving them time to, like, walk into us while we're, like, down on resources with our health and mana pool. So it was pretty dangerous, like, the random fight we took here. It's, it's why it's just important. Like, if you have Herald here, you don't need to stay here. Just, just go to the Baron because it's going to take the tower anyways. I mean, fair enough, it, he greeted it, so it took, like, another, like bunch of health off the tower but still like i think it's just bad to go for the safer play but in this moment a lot of people were dead and i think it was fine being here but the rest of my team i don't really know what they were doing there i think they were trying to de ward then ended up like fighting so now we get baron i Try and rush there as fast as I can. They take the dragon, and that's the correct play for them. They have to do that, otherwise, we're just giving. They're giving us too much stuff. Lee dies. Lee is having a terrible game, and he's like a Lee abuser, apparently. This guy was, I believe. We take the inner. And we try and look to end the game here, but I think we didn't because of Twitch, yeah. Twitch kind of distracted us from hitting the tower. And my team ended up dying. So, we try and just leave now. That is the play. Syndra ends up greeting and walking too far. Lee's coming up, Kindred's coming up soon. We take one tower and try and leave. Actually, looks like we're taking two towers. Do I really greed for it? I don't remember. I guess I do. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can because Kindred wasn't coming up. 
And th these two can't stop me. So, yeah, I just, I just wasn't sure if um, I took it because I, I don't really remember. I don't back row X, I'm looking at red, but it wasn't there. Yeah, I'm like mega strong. Like, my build is just gonna make me unkillable. And I think last item, I was going to build either Death Stance or Sherelda. I think it being me, I was looking at Sherelda more so because I, I like just having damage in that pen. It helps me scale a lot more into the game. And this is kind of like the point where I wanted to build it. So, yeah, we have Baron now. I have no idea why we're mid. There is never a point to go mid lane here because we already took inhib. It's better to use Baron side lanes. And because I have teleport, I should be going bot or I should be going top alone. Or at least me or Syndra. But because Syndra has no TP, I should go bot lane away from my team. And by the time like we're like here or something and there's a fight, I can TP in and I can take some towers bot lane. I think that's what ends up happening. Yeah, I end up going bot here because it just makes sense. Like I'm offering I'm offering so much pressure if I just push out. And my team's like strong by themselves. Yeah, while things are going on there, I'm just looking like mid lane. Or taking the tower. Lucian got one shot there, that was crazy. So it does suck right now. We don't really have a fifth member, so it's a lot harder for us to do a lot of things. But they were going really deep here. And they really made a bad choice. We saw Twitch coming from mid too, so we was we was getting ready for the Twitch. Like we ping here that he's coming. And then expect him to be over here, so I walk up. And as so, he ends up dying to me, because we ended up finding where he's positioning from. And just like that, we get a surrender and win the game. This was the game before my last review to Masters Promos. But I also thought it was good to review because again. I want to record as many unique matchups as possible so I have future content for people playing into these lanes. And it also shows like a different side to how I play because I'm not a Bruiser and Ecton player. I'm more of a full AD player. Although I am trying to adapt my style recently to benefit me in a lot more areas of the game. And that just comes down to evolution as well. Like something I wrote on a Reddit post was that like you have to constantly adapt and improve. Because if you don't, like history, if the things that didn't like adapt to the landscape of the world, they became extinct and they couldn't thrive off like, you know, things because they couldn't change. And, you know, the human race, we are constantly evolving and improving at things throughout time. And, you know, that just means we're going to avoid extinction and we're going to constantly be in line of like the, uh, the meta or like, you know, the like we're just going to be ahead in our knowledge and understanding of stuff. So, like that, and League, you know, it's just best to have that that plan B, or like those other options that stop you from being predictable and abusable. Because the more complex you are to figure out, like the less chance you have of losing, because, you know, you have a lot more ways to play and more aces up your sleeve to draw out and end up carrying games. Like, I carried super hard this game for my team. Like, I was the reason they managed to come back and stuff, and... I do think it was a really good game for me, and I'm very impressed with it. But yeah, that's about it for the review. I hope you guys learned a lot and stuff. And before I go, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, comments help me, you know, get into the algorithm. Like, like the more you guys comment, and like on the videos, the more my videos pop up on stuff. And I would be very thankful if you guys leave a comment. Maybe any questions I I could answer for you. Uh, maybe some criticisms, maybe just even like, I don't know, like a thanks or anything. Like whatever you want to write, just put it in the comments. That, that's all that matters. And I also have a Discord, which is in the description below, as well as uh, my Twitch stream, Godrecton underscore. 
Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.